We welcome you to Noche and a Beyond here on 2K Sports. From the attire to the food, the player's jersey. Tonight, a celebration of the Latin culture. Kevin Harlan here, and I'm joined by Greg Anthony and Clark Kellogg with David Aldridge on our sideline. A look at the Magic starting group. Turner is out there with Scott. Then there's the professor. Then there's Anderson, and it's Skiles in at the point guard position. the rookies are still trying to get their firm footing as a new season begins and a new arena for them opens up. Talk about your journey over the course of your rookie year. Yeah, I remember it was really exciting to have fulfilled the dream of being an NBA player. I struggled early in the season, particularly against some of the veteran guys I ran up against, but found my rhythm and really played extremely well for the second segment of the season but there was a period Kevin when I ran into a wall and just had nothing in terms of sharpness or legs and then all of a sudden after about a week and a half of that it just went away and I hit my stride and finished strong now that's some hang time what a pretty double clutch move agree Greg you can afford to get fancy on your way up when you've got that kind of space and space is what he had fellas soft defense there yeah quick foul to pick up right away here in the first quarter. Here's Skyle. Pass to Scott. Now the pass to the professor. Back to Scott. Lock at six. D2 from Anderson. That shot off the mark. And the Mavericks going the other way now. Their last encounter was in Orlando. Well, they were able to handle the magic. And the last time these two met, they were able to get a big win because of that bench production. Second unit might be a factor in this one as well. And you know what? If they run away with this game like they did in that one, uh, I'd expect to see plenty of minutes again for the guys coming off the bench. Here's the professor following the score by Dallas. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. You know, the defense was lax right there, and he's able to make them pay. Now the Mavericks with it. Passes to Black. Back to Harper. Here's Scott. He's now one for two with that bucket. Pick works well there. Not much resistance from the D. Yeah, that's not the defense you need. You got to be tougher defensively. Here's English, defended by Scott. English misses. I'm a fan of anybody who defends that way. I mean, they weren't about to open the door and just allow him to cruise in for a layup. Here's Skiles. Back to Anderson. Tries a three. The Mavericks pull it in. The Mavericks trail by four. And you look out there at the Magic, one of the taller teams in our league. And you know, that's a philosophical bent for the front office. They want long athletic players, draft guys with great length, and then develop their strengths and skill level. And I actually kind of like that approach. Have a philosophy, stick to it, and be true to it. English is shot as good. That's a textbook example of how to move the ball. Boy, you got to love that action. Here's Skiles. He's guarded by Harper from 20 feet out. That one's rebounded by McCray. And guys, not sure where his head was on that shot. Not what this offense was designed to create. Not at all. I mean, that's where they want him looking for a teammate, not trying to do it on his own. He needs to share the wealth there. The Mavericks shooting their first foul shots of the night here. And team stats last season. 74% shooting, so some numbers that they can definitely improve upon. The first one falls for. You 
know, guys, the Dallas Mavericks with the longest active sellout streak of any pro basketball team. You can put sellout in quotes because they actually give a lot of tickets away to schools and community service groups to make sure that building is full. Turner now on the scoring column with that bucket. One for two this game. Now that's how you pick up second chance points. Stay active and be ready as soon as the shot goes up. Outside Harper. Over Skiles. Harper's shot is good. You know, Clark, the Mavericks making their games accessible to Dallas fans, much more concerned with the packed house and the revenue at the gate. Yeah, and I like that philosophy, guys. I mean, building their future fan base, those fans will be around for a while, um, giving young people a chance to become Mavericks fans for life. And you start early, and it pays dividends down the road usually. And so here is Dallas, the Magic getting the bucket. Here's English. That shot misses. The Magic go the other way with it. Deep two from Anderson. Offensive rebound. And he makes no mistake on the slam dunk. There it is, guys. One of those effort plays that makes a big difference in the game. And GA, it is definitely making a difference so far today. Well, you know, if you're not going to take care of the defensive glass, it's going to be hard to come away with the win. No question, he got bumped on that shot. Yeah, the officials didn't need to talk that one over. It was obvious. So he gets them both. And that's another area where he is just a superb player. Excellent at the free throw line. It's picked off. And it's the Mavericks on the break. McCray passes to Black. And it's blocked. And now Orlando on the break. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. The Magic shooting their first shots from the stripe in this game. The first free throw is good. Off on that one, so he goes one for two at the line. And that one gives them a plus five rebound advantage. Pretty clear they're dominating that area. They've come out with a lot more energy and effort so far. Magic leading by four. Skiles, the pass to Scott. Shoots from the elbow. Takes it up with both hands and rips it down. And able to pad his stats a little bit there on that play. The board and the button. And you know, Greg, that'll put him in the good graces of that coaching <laughs> staff, too. My goodness. Kevin and Greg, hard work on the offensive glass always does that. I mean, his fans will remember the dunk, but the coaches love the rebound. Here's Blackman following the bucket by Orlando. Fast break. Here come the Magic. Scott kicks to Turner. Pass to Skiles. But they recover it. Here's Reynolds. The kick out to Scott. Shot clock at five to the inside. And he floats in for the easy two. Credit the assist on that one. And they've done the job on the offensive glass. I like the activity there, keeping the ball alive and creating some second chance buckets. Here's Blackman. The ball's knocked loose. And another fast break for Orlando. The Magic running. And Skiles gets it to go. Yeah, second chance points, a huge issue right now. They're getting steamrolled inside. Well, guys, nobody's boxing out. I mean, I could go out there and get an offensive rebound. They're just watch. If you're the coaching staff, that's unacceptable. Hey, I'm stating the obvious here, but he was very comfortable taking that shot. Not a defender in sight. To the wing on the left. Orlando moving the ball around. Oh, and he pucks it off the glass. Wow. Right side, Harper. No good that time. And it's the Magic taking it the other way. Here's Reynolds. Still looking for his first bucket in this one. Nobody even close to him, and he can't believe he doesn't knock it down. Here's McCray. Lays it up and banks it in. 
Do you think on average rookies are having a greater impact on their teams now than in decades past? I really don't think so, Kevin. You can go back and look at the numbers historically. Every draft class usually has six to ten rookies that have a significant impact on their respective teams. And of those ten, perhaps ten or twelve, maybe only a few are going to be on playoff teams just because of the nature of the draft. I don't really think that's changed tremendously over the over the decades. To the middle. There's his third field goal, and now he's made half of his six shots. Mark, I want to take you back a bit here to 1982. What was going through your mind over your first few NBA games? Well, Kevin, first of all, I was really excited and thankful to have a chance to realize a dream, but I was also a little bit nervous going up against some of the guys that I had watched and idolized from afar. But once you're between those lines, it's not about idolizing guys. It's about trying to posterize them. <laughs> Any player in particular, one player that you looked out on the floor and you were out there as well saying, oh, my goodness, look who I'm playing against him. Well, when we first saw the uh, Celtics and the Sixers, Larry Bird and those great teams in the 80s, Cedric Maxwell and Kevin yes. McHale, and then the Sixers, my rookie year, won it all. And they had Moses Malone, Dr. J, Bobby Jones, some of the greats in the game. So those two teams, and Dr. J and Larry Bird in particular. Now, here's Scott. He's got six. Here's Skyle. Pass to Scott. The 17 footer. At the live Orlando. Williams with the block. And he gets it back. Goes up again. And there's the pass to Sky. Down low. A solo fast break. Here's McCray and block. That one goes careening off the glass. And you don't ever want to get into the habit of letting the offense get to the rim. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, that's the message they were sending with that foul. Nothing easy inside. And a look at how the offensive approach has been going here so far for Orlando. Early on, guys, excellent work on the boards here. I mean, you've got to like those second chance points they're getting. And also, how about the fact defensively they're getting that backboard and getting out in transition, especially in this first half. Here's Vincent. To the paint. And stolen by White. Here's McCray. Davis, the pass to Lever. The 19-foot shot. And that one goes long. They've been sensational on the backboard to start this game. Yeah, sensational is a really good word for it, Greg. They're tearing it up on the glass. Inside. Drives it from nine. They could use a bucket. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Mark, you know, some players just don't need a lot of rest. They could play basketball all day, every day, and don't want to be taken out. They've all got a lot of engine in them. Yeah, they do. 24-7 guys, we call them. They don't need a lot of fuel, and it seems like they never are out of fuel. Guys like um, Paul George and Russell Westbrook come to mind. Mm -hmm. Absolutely stone cold at the line thus far. And they need every point they can muster right now. They've got to cash in here. Here's Lever. Passes it to Williams. It's hauled in by the Magic. Magic leading by five. Anderson inside. Outside, Scott. White covering. Five on the clock. And it's good for two. And the Magic lead by seven. 102 left here in the opening quarter. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've gone a long time without a bucket. And the slam by Williams. And maybe that'll trigger them. Impossible not to get pumped up after that. Yeah, well, you can see the immediate reaction of the guys in the bench. They are pumped up. And that's what those alley-oops will do for a team. Ignition, switch, ignite. And he gets it to go. Scott's got eight. Already, they piled up eight second-chance points. Beasting on those backboards. I love that physicality. 
pass to Lever over Anderson. Misses off the left iron. Uh, you can't look at the result of that shot. They'll take that whenever they get it. Well, you know, I hear you. That's a good look, but when you're that wide open, I think you got to knock it down. Scott can't get it to go. Average trail by seven. Davis kicks to McCray. Here's Lever, defended by Anderson. Here's Lever. Wow, drew the contact, and that three almost went in, so he'll go to the line for three free throws. The Mavericks have made four free throws from the line and missed two. Taking three shots. Three shots. Three shots. And that one misses. Good on the second free throw. And he nails the third. Now Scott. That will count, and he got that one up in time, but doesn't go in. We'll take a quick break, and then back to the action here. 